I'm here today in one of our operating rooms at UT Southwestern to highlight a very important subject that is featured in the November issue of PRS. Every plastic surgeon should read these two articles and join the conversation as we discuss patient safety in the operating room for plastic and reconstructive surgery. In these two articles from Dr. Poor and his group, they discuss the medical community's efforts to combat preventable medical errors. The authors conduct a literature review to identify factors with the largest impact on operating room safety. To combat wrong site surgery, the authors recommend a preoperative ver verification process to ensure that all team members verify the correct site, the correct person, and the correct operation. For instance, in this patient, if we were operating on the left orbit area, we would have to uh, mark that exact area uh, preoperatively before the patient's even taken to the operating room, and then it's verified again during the timeout period. And that all has to match between the operating room staff, the surgeon, and the anesthesiologist. For more on this, we're going to turn to Glennis Parker, our director of our outpatient surgery center here at UT Southwestern. Once we come back into the operating room, we perform a timeout. The circulating nurse asks everybody in the operating room if this is a good time for a timeout. Everybody has to stop what they're doing. This includes anesthesia, the scrub tech, the surgeon, the resident, anybody else who might be in the room. They must stop what they're doing and pay attention and the components of the timeout are discussed. Everybody agrees and the surgery begins. With risks including neural extremity injury and hip or knee damage, selecting the right patient positioning is also very important for overall patient safety. The authors note several factors that should be assessed preoperatively in an effort to select the safest position. The authors also provide us with a detailed discussion on the benefits and risks of the supine, prone, lithotomy, and lateral decubitus positions. Many patients have had previous problems, including neck problems, so we need to be very cognizant that we protect them uh, in a safe position. With an estimated 100 operating room fires each year in the United States, the authors also focus on preventing operating room fires. They recommend adoption of the fire triangle in which we manage the ignition source, the fuel source, and the oxidizers simultaneously. In our ORs, fire safety is also of utmost importance. I always recommend the following, especially in patients that have IV sedation. If they are going to just have sedation, before we begin the operating room, procedure, we always stop the oxygen source, we remove the oxygen cannulas, and make sure it is out of range before we begin the operative procedure, especially if we're using electrocautery, which will be the ignition source for our potential fire. Many studies, including the two featured in this month's journal, reinforce one simple notion. The best way to improve operating room safety is clear and effective communication. The responsibility to promote and maintain safety should be shared among all the participants in the operating room, from the patient, the OR staff, and the surgeon. Together, we can reinforce and improve upon the safety of plastic and reconstructive surgery today.